well, how do that jump? So jumping straight over to IGN and to this trailer, which I think is pretty darn freaking awesome. This took me by surprise. I've never heard this before. It's called Eternal Strands. Now, I'm a massive fan of Shadow of the Colossus, Fenrix Rises and Monster Hunter series. This seems like it's got elements of all of those and baked a giant freaking hot mess, which is this. And when I say a hot mess, it's actually quite a beautiful looking game. I love this sort of cell shady type art style and cartoony art style. It's what drew me to No Man's Sky originally, although it's evolved from that to some degree. But this looks freaking fantastical. This definitely looks like a game that I could happily bring to my channel. So there's these giant colossal type beasties roaming the actual areas of this land. I think 12 of them or something. A little bit like Shadow of the Colossus and you've got to take those out. But I like the fact that I, I, I like the look of all the weapons. I'm liking the look of the magic use. There's ice magic and fire magic at least that I've seen inside of this trailer. And yeah, look at that. He's even frozen them in place there. Do I like the look of the actual gameplay? I do. It looks like it's quite cool. And something to note on here, people, at the end, it actually says that it's coming to all platforms. So Steam, Xbox Series X and S, and PlayStation 5. Pretty darn lovely. OK, I've got one more part of information on this. So there's a second trailer here, and it's all about the actual boss fight and combat. Now, what I think I should do is really just maybe shut up and play you this trailer in full and then talk afterwards, which I think is probably the best way of doing this one. So I've turned the sound up. I'm just going to make sure everything's all up as well over there. And yeah, I'm just going to be hitting a play over on this one. So here we go, people. Let's hit play. Let's make it nice and big. In Eternal Strands, a major part of your adventure will be doing battle with the nine massive bosses that wander freely throughout parts of the world. Okay, nine. In my time exploring the magical land of the Enclave, I encountered a handful of these formidable monstrosities, which ranged from a robotic bipedal summoner who used his magical staff to cover the world in fire, to a flying dragon who oppressively hunted me from the skies above. <laughs> Continuing our month-long coverage of Eternal Strands as part of IGN First, Today we'll be taking a look at one such oversized baddie, the Ark of the Forge, a hammer-wielding automaton with a deep love of smelting puny weavers into piles of ash. Okay. I'm not too sure why the magic wheel has to cover so much of the screen. So in a dollar trends, we have this massive 25 meter high creatures that we call epics. They roam around the world and then it's for the players to engage with them or not, but they are at the source of every power, magical power you're going to get in the game. Ah, uh, okay, cool. So you have to defeat them to get so your magic. So today we're unveiling the Ark of the Forge, a huge towering construct of about 23 to 25 meters. Uh, it was built by the Enclave to be able to craft very huge structures easily. He is a blacksmith at heart, that's why he has a giant uh, flaming hammer, is to cool. be able to help that society to evolve the way it did in the past. You can find it like the two-third mark in a game, deep inside the forge of, uh, like in the underground of the uh, Enclave society. Very cool. I'm liking the premise. And it's got destructible environments. Very cool. You know, one of his trademark visual thing you will notice, uh, the first is, of course, the giant flaming hammer. So, <laughs> yeah. spoiler alert, he does use this giant hammer to <laughs> create fire in the environment. He can hit the spoiler. ground with it. It makes, like, a lot of flames everywhere, makes the environment super hot. So then you need to avoid not only, like, you know, the giant hammer, which is enough trouble on its own, but also what that creates in the environment, which, you know, when you fight with him after like, you know, two, three minutes, you can get into a situation where you look at the battlefield and you don't know where to go because there's so much fire everywhere. Yeah. Like it's not one and done. The fire stays in the environment and it does affect the battlefield a lot. He also has like a, an anger management problem because he can get into like, if you start doing a lot of damage to him, he's gonna get angry, like flame up, its entire body and run directly at you to s smash your face. One other uh, <laughs> way he can react to you is if you climb on him, you know, because he's quite dangerous when you're on the ground, so you're like, oh, I'm gonna climb on him, you know, that sounds reasonable, but then he can shake you off, but most importantly, he can just grab you and just like crush you 
uh, in his hands. And then throw you back in the fire. And just like, yep, in the fire you go. Just like Shadow of the Colossus, and I can see there's a stamina bar and stuff like that. The oh, location this... at which you fight the Ark of the Forge is also important because they're going to be roaming around all the maps that we have in the game. So some maps are going to be way more difficult for you to defeat. So inside a forest, you can imagine that everything's going to become like a blaze. So if you get to caves, then that might be a little bit easier. The weather also in Enclave is, is kind of all chaotic so sometimes you have big shift of weather so if you can manage to fight or encounter the arc of the forge when there's a big flash freeze with full of snow you might have a better chance to defeat so as fred mentioned it's really uh, good for you as a player to engage with the arc of the forge during a flash freeze because everything is cold so it lessens its power However, we also have droughts in the game, which has the opposite effect, where everything becomes hotter. So the air in the level will actually get to a higher temperature easier, which that is not to your advantage. So maybe if you're not geared for the fight and you're in a drought and you see a fire creature in the level, maybe you should reconsider. So the Ark of the Forge, as you can guess, is a fire-based creature. So once you defeat him, you will be able to get uh, a firepower thread, which you will be able to use in your uh, own toolkit. And we try to keep like a link between what the player gets and what the, the, the epic uses, so you'll be able to understand what you just gained from it. Sweet. Look at that. For more on Yellow Brick Games' upcoming boss-slaying adventure, Eternal Strands, check out the action-packed reveal trailer. And stay mm -hmm. tuned for more exclusive reveals all month long as part of our ongoing IGN First coverage. Cool. I'm gonna be tuning in for that. else, stick with IGN. So, there was a couple of little mini takeaways there with that. I mean, I don't understand why the actual move wheel for your spells has to come up dead centre of the screen. After all, down in the other corner down here, you've got like um, some other icons. It'd be nice if it just sort of came out from there and it's in that lower corner. It can still take up a large portion of the screen, but to have it directly in the middle when you're trying to target something that could be trying to target you, I could... Is it just me or does that feel like it might just be a little bit blind spotty um, drawing an action-packed jaunt of the game? I mean, it does look freaking awesome though. You know, this is something that I think I could easily bring to my channel. It's got elements of fantasy there and it, it looks very much in keeping with, like I say, gameplay sort of, there you go, there's the move wheel that I was on about. And th there's the other icons down there, look, you know, why not just have it come out from there? Bit of an oddity where they've chose the placement of that. It kind of interrupts the flow of game for me, in my opinion, anyway. Let us know in the comments whether you sort of had that same sort of feeling when you were seeing it. It just felt a bit jarring, even when I was watching them play. I like the splashing up of all the numbers and things to show how much damage you've done. There's a lot of things that I like about this that, you know, Shadow of the Colossus didn't do, but I think Shadow of the Colossus, it was... The puzzle was finding how to take the creature out. So if it gave you giant damage numbers, that kind of defeats the point of Shadow of the Colossus. So I like where this is going. It looks like it's got a more arcadey feel. It's got destructible environments, like that post gets completely shattered. And then they leap on and grab onto his chest, which I thought was an awesome element there. So yeah, I'm thoroughly looking forward to this one. I, I, I think this one I could bring to my channel and play it through. Heck yeah. Whether I do that in live, though, would be different, though. I'll probably do pre-recorded stuff, a bit like I do with Dragon's Dogma, which reminds me, I need to get back into that. I'm freaking missing that game, I guess. Anyway, people, I hope this has put it on your radars as well. Eternal Strands, peeps. Yeah, hit it up. Yeah, I know I will. Anyway, till next time, people. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.